So in this first video looking at circles, we'll be looking at how to label and finding parts of the circle. We'll be introducing pi and find using pi to find the circumference of a circle, including writing answers in terms of pi and looking at some complex worded problems. Now before we move on to working out the circumference of a circle, it's important that we're able to label the parts of a circle. Now these questions are becoming more and more popular on exams, either as multiple choice questions or as questions as you can see um, on the screen. Now let's just go through some of the basic ones. Now it's also important that you know and know how to describe each of the things that we are talking about. So the first one we'll look at is the red line. I'll try and go in terms of making this more colour coordinated. So the line that goes through the from one end of the circle to the other through the center is what we call the diameter. And the diameter is the line that goes from one end of the circle to another and the key important with this is via the center point and that's one of the most important things so it's worth just making highlight that the diameter is a, a line that goes from one end of the circle to another via the center point now what we call the line that goes from the center to the edge of the circle that is what we call the radius and this goes to so a line that goes from the center to the edge of the circle. And finally with this one we look at what we call the perimeter of a circle which is called the circumference and that is the perimeter of the circle. Now although it is technically the circumference is the perimeter of a circle, um, it's always going to be called the circumference. So it's quite rare that you'll ever ask to work out the perimeter of a circle, it'll just ask you to work out the circumference of the circle. So now let's look at some more diverse parts of the circle that you may not know. Now this line here, and I can just see this red dot, so let's just get rid of that. So, a line that touches a circle at one point is what we call the tangent, and this is a line that touches the circle at one point only. It doesn't matter what point that is, just as long as it touches it at one point only, so the point there would be there. Now what we then call a slice of a circle uh, is not the slice of a circle unfortunately, this is what we call a sector and this is what we call the, a slice. Or a pizza slice if you're feeling any hungry. Uh, so it's a slice of the circle or cake or pizza, whichever you prefer. Now what we call a line that cuts through from one end of the circle to another that doesn't go through the center, this is what we call the chord and that is a line that goes from one end of the circle to another not via the center and what we call a really bad way of cutting the cake or cutting the pizza this here is what we call a segment and moving on to the last two parts of a circle and this is talking about the the edge of this the circle or what parts of the circumference. So this part here, which I'm just highlighting in green, is what we call the arc and that is the minor arc and the rest of this circle 
So if I just highlight it in orange, pretty poorly, is what we call the major arc. And it's important that obviously that you name, I don't know why I put brackets around the arc, it should be the other one way around. Um, it's really important that you state the major or the minor arc because rather than just saying arc, it could be either or. So it's all about whichever smaller would be the minor, whichever's bigger will be the major. And that's just part of the, so the arc is basically the smaller part of the circumference. captured by a sector and obviously a major arc would we just change that smaller word for larger now then what we then move on to is how we work out the circumference of a circle and these are very very popular questions that come up and it's definitely worth making a note of what you can see on the screen now the circumference now for any given circle, and I mean absolutely any given circle, the circumference of that circle will always be 3.14157 times bigger than the length of its diameter. So if you imagine you've got um, a piece of string and you find a circle, now let's actually draw this circle properly and I'll just describe what we mean by this. So if I've got this circle which I'm drawing here, now if I then work out the diameter of that, now if I had a piece of string and I measure the length all the way around, and I worked out the diameter which goes obviously goes through the center, then that red the black perimeter of that circle will be 3.14157 times bigger, roughly around about three times bigger than the red line that you can see. And that applies to all circles. So regardless if you're drawing it with a compass or if you're looking at a roundabout, that the the circumference of that circle, whichever circle, will always be 3.14157 times bigger than the diameter, or roughly around about 3. Now, because this number is quite important, and circles are very, very special shapes, that we call this number as pi. Now, this, pi, this number is stored on your calculator. 3.14157 uh, is a number that you should really know, or at least 3.14, uh, rounded it up to two decimal places, uh, but it is a number that you will find on your calculator. And again, I'll show you where you can find that on your calculator as well. Now, as we know that the circumference of a circle is always going to be 3.14157 times bigger than the diameter, then we can work out what the circumference of any circle is. Because if you imagine, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to measure the circumference of a circle, because I don't know how, how you carry a piece of string or even with a tape measure, it's quite difficult um, to measure circles. However, working out the diameter is definitely a lot easier. Now, because of this, we need to know these formulas here. Now the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter or as we've recognized, or we should have recognized, if that the radius is half the size of the diameter then we can use the formula of 2 pi r or 2 times pi times the radius depending on which information you've been given. So if I just label this as d and I draw a green line from the center and that is going to be my R. Now if I'm given the diameter then I would use this formula and one of my teachers always used a way of remembering these formulas is like chicken pie dinner so C equals pi times D. Now another formula depending on which you may want to learn is the circumference equals 2 pi R and it doesn't really matter which one of those two formulas you remember as long as you know how to get from one to the other uh, both will give you the circumference. One might require a little extra work, it all depends on what information is given to you in the question, which is what we're going to go through now. So let's have a look at working out how we work out the circumference of each of these three uh, circles. Now I've not put any measurements on there, so let's put some numbers on there. So let's say this is 8 centimetres, let's say this is 5 centimetres, and let's say this is 3 centimetres. Now, obviously, these numbers could be absolutely anything, and the units don't necessarily need to be centimetres. It could be metres, it could be millimetres, it could be absolutely any length of um, of any units of length um, that we could actually work with. So, in this particular question, it's always important you read the question, so it has to find the circumference of each of the circles. Now, what I'd always recommend that you do is, first of all, write down the formula that you know. So, we're going to work with pi times d, or that c equals 2 times pi 
times the radius. Now, for this, what I'd always recommend that you do is when working with these questions, particularly with circles, is start off by writing out what D is, which in this case is 8 centimetres, and then work out what R is. So if D is 8, R is going to be 4 centimetres. Now, once we know what D and R is, we can now choose whichever formula you want to work with. So we're either going to work with pi, uh, C equals pi times D, or we're going to work with circumference equals 2 times pi times R. Now, as I said, it doesn't really matter which one we're going to go for, but because I've been given the diameter, I'm going to use pi times d. So I'm going to write down the formula, so c equals pi times d. Then I'm going to substitute the number of 8, swap that for d. So I've got c equals pi times 8. So once you've got to this stage, you then want to got a choice of two things. So you can either leave your answer in terms of pi, so c equals 8 pi, or what we could do is type this into our calculator. So if I can type this into my calculator now, in terms of your pi button, it should be a button on your scientific calculator. If you can't find it, it might be one of the shift functions. And if you've got one of the most popular Casio calculators, if you go to press shift and then your times 10. So if you go press shift and then press your times 10 to the power x, which is on the bottom row of your calculator, you should have a little pi symbol that comes up. And if you've done that correctly, you should have the little pi symbol that comes up on your screen. So what we're going to do is you type in pi. Now, if you haven't got a pi symbol, you could just type in 3.14, which for foundation papers is going to be absolutely fine. But I would strongly recommend that you type in the pi value. So we're going to do pi times 8. Now, if I reach out for my calculator and enter that in, so I've got 8 times pi, it gives me an answer of 25 point one three two seven four one two three which I then want to round up so let's say it's twenty to one decimal place so it's going to be two point five uh, point twenty five point one centimeters and that's to one decimal place and the key thing to there is don't forget the units so if I look at number two I'm going to do exactly the same so again start off by writing down what the diameter is and then working out what the radius is so it's going to be two point five centimeters and then pick a formula you're going to use. So again, I'm going to stick with pi times the diameter. So it's going to be c equals pi times 5. And then all I then need to do is type that into my calculator. So shift pi times 3, so 5 centimeters. And I get an answer of 15.707. And that continues, giving me an answer of 15.7 centimeters to one decimal place. Now again the key thing you want to recognize here is check the validity of your answers. Now when you're working out the circumference it should always be roughly just over three times the diameter. So if I look at question one, three times eight is 24. So I look to myself, is my answer close to 24? Yeah, so there's a good chance I've got it right. With question two, I've got three times five which is 15. Is my answer close to 15? Well, yeah, it is. So it's a really good way of deciding whether your answer is correct or not. So with question three, so here I don't know the diameter, but I know what the radius is, which is three centimetres. So if the radius is three centimetres, the diameter is going to be six. And again, from this, you can choose whichever formula you want to choose. So for using the diameter, I'm going to do C equals pi times six. So I'm going to do C equals, and again, you can either use the pi number, which is probably the better option, or you can use 3.14 if your rounding is a bit sketchy. So here we've got 18.849 and it continues. So C equals 18.8 centimeters to one decimal place. And again, do you need to round? Do you always need to round up to one decimal place? Well, usually it will tell you the question. If it doesn't tell you the question, then you can write your answer in any form as you wish. So you can either round your answer up to one decimal place, two decimal places, three significant figures. If you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, there is videos on rounding that you can then watch, not try to plug them. Um, or you could leave your answer in terms of pi, which we will come on to in a second. Now, one thing I'm just going to move on to is let's say we're going to use the 2 pi r formula. And let's see if it gives us the same value. So c equals 2, and it's always 2, times pi times a radius which is 3. Now if I type that into my calculator, so 2 times pi times 3, I'm going to end up with the exact same answer. 
So it's going to be 18.849 with a few numbers that follow. So again, rounded up gives me 18.8 centimetres to one decimal place. So as you can see, it doesn't really matter which of the two formulas you use, as long as you get the right, an the right answer. And again, to check the validity of your answer, if you look at the diameter, is the answer roughly around three times bigger than the diameter? Well, yes, because three times six is 18. Now, the next set of questions tend to appear on the non-calculated paper, and this is when you're asked to work out the circumference, uh, but this time leaving your answer in terms of pi. So let's have a look at some numbers here. So let's put some numbers in these questions. So let's go for nine centimeters. Let's go for 12 centimeters. And let's go for um, 2.5 centimeters. So leaving your answer in terms of pi. And again, this would most likely come up on a non-calculated paper. So for this, I'm going to use the form. So make a note of the form. So C equals pi times D or c equals 2 times pi times r, depending on which formula you want to use. And again, you don't need to learn both, just one of them would be absolutely fine. So again, start off by writing down what the diameter is. So in this case, it's 9, and r is 4.5. So from this, I'm going to use the diameter because I don't, don't particularly want to work with decimals. So I've got c equals 9 times pi. Now, the nice thing about this is, is that is basically the answer. So all we then need to do is ignore the times and just join the 9 and the pi together. So C equals 9 pi and then the units are centimetres and there is your final answer. Now if you've got one of the modern calculators, your question would actually give you your answer in terms of pi first. And the reason why it does that is because it's the most accurate form. So we don't need to involve any decimals, no rounding involved. That is the answer in its most accurate form. So with question 2, so here I've got diameter equals 12, and so the radius equals 6. And again, I'm going to use the C equals pi times D. So I've got 12 times pi. And then, so given the answer, I'm just going to ignore the time sign. So I've got 12 pi. And there is my final answer, and it's in centimetres. And then moving on to question 3. So here I've got the radius is 2.5, so that the diameter is going to be five centimeters and this is what I'm then going to use so I've got C equals five times pi so then the answer then is just five pi centimeters and there is your final answer so you can see here that I've, I don't need to go anywhere near a calculator when you're working with pi and you're working out the circumference of a circle all you need to do is find out what the diameter is and then just stick a pi at the end of it and don't forget the units now the next thing we then move on to is what happens if you've got semicircles or uh, quarter circles. Now for this let's just put some numbers on there to begin with so let's just stick a four centimeters there and let's go for a 20 centimeters here and a five centimeters here. Now in terms of this now when you're working out complex shapes as we've got here the perimeter of the shape is the distance around the whole entire shape. Now with semicircles there are two parts to this particular question so we've got to work out the sort of arc part of the circle and then we've also got to then work out what this straight edge of this semicircle is going to be and I need to work out those two bits separately to go from there. Now in terms of the green section well if the radius is 4 then that means that the total distance going across from one end of the circle that's also going to be 4 so that green line is going to be 8 centimeters. Now in terms of the arc well that's half a circle in other words, half the, sem the circumference of a circle. So the full circumference is going to be the diameter, which is 8, times pi. So half the semicircle, so the semicircumference, is going to be that divided by 2, which is going to be 4 pi. So then working out the total perimeter of this shape, so the total perimeter is going to be 8 plus 4 pi. And the 8 is the, the, straight, the straight line, and the 4 pi is that half the circle. Now, if I want to leave the answer in terms of pi 
then that's all I'd need to write. So there is one form of the answer. Or I could simply type that into my calculator. So I do 8 plus 4 pi, and I get an answer of 20.6 centimeters to one decimal place. The actual answer is 20.5663706 on the calculator. So now what I'm going to do is do the exact same process, but this time for question two. So again, I recognize that there are two parts to this particular question. There is this straight edge, which I'm just going to highlight in purple, and that straight edge is 20 centimeters. And I then need to work out what this arc is going to be. Now again, if it was a full circle, so let's just label the parts. So if it was a full circle, then it would equal 20 times pi. But as it's a semicircle, I need to divide that by 2, so it's going to be 10 pi. So then all I then need to do is add up the 20 centimeters to 10 pi. So the total perimeter is going to be 20 plus 10 pi centimeters. And again, that's leaving my answer in terms of pi. Or what I could do is enter that on my calculator and I should get 51, so or 51.4 centimeters. And again, that is to one decimal place. Again, the actual answer you should have on your calculator is 51.4159264. Now, moving on from this, now when we move on to a quarter circle, what you should be able to spot is that there are three parts of this particular shape. So we've got the height of the shape, we've got the base of the shape, and we've got this curved area here. Now, in terms of the two curved, the two straight edges, that the green one's already been given as five centimeters, and this five, this purple length will also be five. Why? Because they're both the radius of a circle, and that's why that other side is not given to you. Now, the next thing I then need to do is work out what this curved area is. Now, this is a quarter of the total circumference. Now, to work out the circumference of the circle, I need to know the diameter. So the diameter of this circle, if the radius is 5, the diameter is going to be 10. So to work out the circumference of the full circle, it's going to be 10 times pi. But because I want to work out what a quarter of the circumference is, I need to divide that by 4. So this length here is going to be 10 times pi divided by 4, which is then therefore going to be uh, half of five, 10 is, f two, uh, is 5, and half of 5 is 2.5, so it's going to be 2.5 pi. Now, what I then need to do is to work out the total perimeter of this shape is now add up these three numbers together. So in terms of the total perimeter, now in terms of writing your answer in terms of pi, it's going to be 5 plus 5 plus 2.5 pi, which is 10 plus 5. 2.5 pi centimeters or if I actually want to write the actual answer down I can type that into my calculator and I do 10 plus 2.5 times pi gives me an answer of 17.9 centimeters to one decimal place now the actual answer on my calculator is 17.853981631 which again I've rounded up to one decimal place. Now, if you're, if you're not so great with the rounding, I strongly recommend you just copy whatever's on your calculator. Um, obviously, you may lose a mark if a question specifically wants you to round your answer up. But again, losing one mark is better than losing six. Well, six is a bit of an exaggeration. Um, you probably, this question may be worth probably three marks. But the key thing is don't forget the units. So let's have a look at what we then call reverse questions. Now, reverse questions are when you're given the circumference and you want to find the diameter or the radius. Now, for these two questions, what we're, get, we're asked to do is to find out what the diameter and what the radius is. Now, for these types of questions, it's just a case about working backwards. Now, if I just label these, uh, it's one thing I forgot to do. So let's label this one number one and this one number two, which we'll move on to in a sec. Let's just put a divide so we're not getting confused in two. Now, 
to do this, what we need to do is recognize the formula. So in terms of the circumference, we're going to use the formula of c equals pi times d. Now in this particular question, I know what the circumference is. So I've got pi times d, which I don't know, equals 25 centimeters. So to work out d, I need to get rid of the pi. So what's the opposite of times and by pi? Well, that's going to be divided by pi. So d equals 25 divided by pi. Now if I type that into my calculator, 25 divided by pi, either as a fraction or um, just using division symbol, I get 7.957747, and that continues, centimeters. Now if I round that number up, I get d equals 7, where it's going to equal 8 centimeters. And that's to zero or one decimal place. Let's just put it to one decimal place. Or you could write it as 8.0 centimeters. That's probably a better way of writing your answer. Uh, I could write this answer as 7. Point or 7.96 centimeters, and that's to two decimal places. Now, to work out the radius, all I need to do is divide this number by two. So here I'm going to and leave that number on the calculator. Now I would strongly recommend you use the whole number. So R equals, so when I read the whole number, I mean exactly what's written on your calculator. So it's going to be 3.9788735577 centimeters. So R equals, and it's going to be either 4.0 centimeters to one decimal place, or it's going to be 3.98 centimeters to two decimal places. And it's always important that, I would say, in an exam or in a test, it's unlikely you'll get asked to work out the diameter and the radius. But it's always good practice to know which side to work out both. But make sure you're not automatically working out both. Make sure you read the question, because obviously if you work out, if the question is asking you if you work out the diameter and you work out the radius, you're going to lose some marks, even though it might be clear that you've already worked out the diameter. So make sure you read the question carefully. So let's have a look at question two. So again, we're going to go through the same notion. So again, let's write down the formula of c equals pi times d. So what I've got is I've got pi times d equals 243 meters. So what I need to do is divide by pi, and that's what the diameter is going to equal. So diameter equals 243 divided by pi, and that gives me an answer of 77.3493023. Which to one decimal place is going to give me 77.3 meters. Not centimeters. Again, kind of fall under that trap. Meters to one decimal place, or I could write it as 77.35 meters to two decimal places. Now to work out the radius, all I need to do is just divide that diameter value by two, and again. Try and use the exact value, so this number here rather than these. It shouldn't really make a difference, but again, you really want to make sure your accuracy is on point. So let me just work that out again because I've messed up my calculator. And so we get an answer for the radius as being 38.674.65117. So again, rounding these numbers up, we get 38.7 meters to one decimal place and 38.67 meters to two decim uh, decimal places. And there are our final answers. Now, we then move on to worded questions. So what I'm gonna do first is, um, let's just make this a little bit bigger so you can, it's a bit clearer for us to read. So now these questions are very, very popular, particularly um, when you haven't got circles and, and for more higher level questions. So a bicycle wheel has a diameter of 60 centimetres. If a rider travels 12 metres on the bike, how many complete revelation, uh, revolutions do, would the wheel do? So basically what this question is asking is you've got a bike rider. The wheels are six, has a diameter of 60 centimetres. Uh, so let's just highlight some of the key information. The diameter is 60 centimetres and he travels total of 12 metres. It's not that actual far but we're going to see how it goes. 
Now the key thing I note here is we've got a change of units. So what I need to do is decide do I want to work in centimetres or do I want to work in metres. Now it's entirely up to you, it shouldn't make a difference to the final answer. So 60 centimetres is 0.6 metres and 12 metres is 12, that we just multiply it by 100 and we get 1,200 centimetres. Now it depends on which one you want to work with. So we're either going to work with 60 centimetres and 1,200 or we're going to work with 0.6 metres and 12 metres. And again, it doesn't really matter which one we're going to work with. Now, I'm going to probably opt for working with centimetres. So working with centimetres, what I need to do is step one is find the circumference of the circle. Of the wheel, shall I say. So to do that, what I need to do is pi times the diameter, which is 60. And so C equals pi times 60. And then we've got, so in other words, that's going to give me 60 pi in terms of pi. Or if I type that into my calculator, now because we're working in centimetres, we're going to expect big numbers. If we're working with metres, we'll be expecting with smaller numbers. Um, but that's just the main difference. So I get 188.495559. Centimeters. So that's the circumference of one wheel. Now the next thing we then need to do is to then work out the complete revolution. So divide the circumference by the uh, distance. So, or should I say from the distance. Let's get the English right. So for this, what we then need to do is we're going to look at the distance, which is 1,200, and we're going to divide that by the actual answer. Now, if you can't be bothered to write down the answer, then what I'd recommend that you do is write your answer in terms of pi. So if you work at your fraction button, or what you could do is type in 1,200 divided by bracket 60 times by pi, close bracket, let me just get rid of that, set that first bracket because we don't need it. And if you type that into your calculator, so 1,200 divided by 60 pi, we get an answer of 6.3661977.24. Now, what we want to do is we want to look at the complete revolution. So the wheel has turned just over 6.3 uh, times. So the answer to this question is going to be 6 revolutions. And there is your final answer. Now, if we worked with meters, so again, let me just quickly do this so you can see where we're going from. So working in meters, hashtag one, so working at the circumference, so C equals would be 0 0.6 times pi. So C equals 0 0.6 times pi, which gives me 1.88 and 49 blah, blah, blah. And then with step two, I'm going to do 12 divided by 1.8849 and, and that number continued. And if I divide those numbers, so 12 divided by that number, I get the exact same answer of 6.36619 blah blah blah, which gives me an answer of 6 revolutions. So you can see how it doesn't really matter what units and nor should it matter what units you go for. It all depends on what type of numbers you're happy to work with. If you're happy to be with big numbers, you go for the smaller units. If you're happy to work with smaller numbers, then go for the larger unit. So let's move on to the next worded problem. So let me just move this clock if I can, just to make the question a little bit bigger. And the question a bit bigger so you can actually read it. Here we go. So now this one's a little bit more complicated, but again, a very, very popular question when it comes to textbooks or um, taking your knowledge a little bit further for more applied questions. So it says a clock has a radius of 10 centimeters. Work out the distance moved by the hour hand between 9, 2 p.m. and 6, uh, 9 p.m. Now, in terms of this particular thing, what we need to do is look at the hour hand. Now, the first thing we want to do is work out what the circumference of the circle is. Now I know that the radius is 10, so the total, so step one is find 
the circumference of the circle. So if the radius is 10, that means that the diameter is going to be 20. So therefore, the circumference is going to be 20 times pi. And I'm going to leave, or if we type that into our calculator, so 20 times pi, I get an answer of 62.83185307 centimeters. Now, what I want to do here is I need to work out what this part, what one hour is on top of the, on the clock. Now, if this is for 12 hours, so that equals 12 hours, then to work out what one hour is, all I need to do is divide 62.83185307 divided by 12, and that will give me the distance travelled in one hour, which is 5 point two three five nine eight seven seven five six centimeters per hour now for question so this would be step two now the step three what we then need to do is now answer the question so the hour difference between 2 p.m. and 9 p.m. is seven hours so seven hours equals seven times and then this number here of 5.2359 uh, so it's 5.2359 and we'll continue the numbers and if I've got already got my calculator all I need to do is just times that by seven and I get 36.6519 which rounded up gives me 36.7 centimeters now for question B this one is a little bit more complicated so the first thing we want to do is work out what the time difference is between 8.15 and 11.30 so the time difference between the two is 3 hours and 15 minutes now in terms of the minute hand which is the most important one that we're working with so it's worth highlighting that we're working with the minute hand this is going to be 3 complete Um, turns or revolutions as we probably want to call it so three complete turns and 15 minutes is going to be the equivalent of now in the previous question we worked out that one hour was roughly about 5.23 and if I just work that out correctly on my calculator we get 5.23598 and that is also going to be the same as for five minutes equals 5.23598726 so it's going to be three lots three times the circumference of the circle plus three five minute turns now the circumference we worked out in the previous question as being 20 pi or we worked it out as being my calculator is being 62.83185307 so to work out the total distance it's going to be th six, uh, 3 times 62.8318 now as long as you a question that I always get asked is do you have to write all down the numbers in the decimal number well perfectly yes but you could probably get away with just writing down the first couple of numbers plus three times and then it's a five minute slot which is 5.23598 and if I type that into my calculator so I've got now again one reasons why we like well, it's better to work with pi is it's easier to type in so one way of getting the correct answer is leaving your circumference in terms of pi and this is going to be equivalent to 20 pi divided by 12 which is we can divide both numbers by 4 so we get 5 over 3 pi and so another way of writing this is 5 over 3 pi and we're adding so let's just get rid of all of that so yes you could type in what I've written in red or you could type in what I've written in green and you should get the exact same answer 
so if I just type that into my calculator I get an answer of 65 pi and if I convert that into a decimal it gives me 204.2 centimeters to one decimal place and again these are like more worded questions so it's just a case of it and incorporates time as well so it's kind of cross topic uh, and it's just a case of just working down breaking the question up and seeing what we can work with now the final example that we're going to work with is let's just make this question a little bit bigger so we can actually see it on the screen and so here we've got a door frame and the question is asking us to work out the total distance of the black frame so the perimeter of the shape is what we're working out with now the key thing we note is let's have a look at and as we talked about when we're working about perimeter of these compound shapes is recognizing how many sides of this shape that we've got so here I've got this green side here I've got this red side here I've got this blue side here and I've got this semicircle part here and what I need to do is I need to work out those four sections individually so looking at the green side well that's going to be 1.4 meters now one thing I've noticed here is we've got a difference of units so the first thing we need to do is make sure we've got working the same units so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with let's go for centimeters so I'm going to convert this to 170 centimeters now if I wanted to convert it into meters then this would be 0 0.8 so again it doesn't really matter which one you want to go for so if I'm working with meters I'm working in the things in blue but what I'm going to do is I'm going to work in centimeters so I'm going to be using these two numbers here and let me just make that a little bit clearer so it's 170 centimeters so in terms of the green section let's work with centimeters let's get rid of that so the green section is 170 centimeters working with the red section well that's going to be 80 centimeters and then working with the blue length that's 170 centimeters as well now the next thing I've then got to work out is the semicircle part now as it's a semicircle now even though the diameter which is represented by the dash line is not labeled I know it's going to be the same as 80 centimeters so this is also going to be so the diameter of this semicircle is going to be 80 centimeters now unlike the previous questions I don't need to work out what that dotted line is I'm just interested in the arc section so if it was a full circle then it's pi times the diameter but as it's a semicircle then it's pi times the diameter divided by 2 and this is the formula I'm going to be using to work out what the arc part of that semicircle is now again we're not going to add the 80 centimeters we're not working out what this length here is uh, it's nothing that I'm not interested in needing so working that out it's going to be pi times the diameter which is 80 and I'm going to divide that by 2 and again because it's a semicircle which gives me 40 pi now if I typed in 40 pi on my calculator it's going to give me an answer of 125.6637061 so all I now need to do to work out the total uh, length of the frame and that's going to be adding these four numbers together which let's just highlight that so it's going to be adding 170 plus 80 plus another 170 plus 125.6637061 or we can add 40 uh, pi so we're going to do 170 plus 80 plus another 170 plus 125.6637061 and if I type that into my calculator plus 80 plus 170 plus 125.6637061 I get an answer of 154 uh, 145 rather 
0.6637061, which rounded up gives me 545.7 centimetres. And again, it's really important that you note what the centimetres are going to be. Now, if I was working in metres, then the correct answer you should have is 5.457 metres, and that's going to be to three decimal places. And either of those would be absolutely fine for you to use.